Hi YouTube, this is Mark from Abilities and a little while back I did a video on intermittent catheterization talked about some different types available that I had tried and used uh, and today what I wanted to do is actually show you how I catheterize myself using one of these closed systems um, which is this uh, Roosh MMG H2O so before I get to actually using a catheter what I wanted to mention or at least talk about is um, you know how are you going to get to the entry point so this really depends on you know how you're sitting in your chair and what type of clothing you're going to be wearing. I think if you're new to catheterization, uh, the best thing that you can do in terms of clothing is to wear something that has a zipper. Um, for me, what I tend to do is I can scoot out of my chair a little bit here, and you know I will just essentially undo my pants and get to uh, you know the area where I need to and then just pull my pants down. So in this situation, I'm gonna just kind of show you, like I would, I would just, you know, pull my pants down to where I can get to the area in order to do it. Um, but that's kind of the general idea. Uh, if you're more advanced, you know, I've seen some people that will, you know, use something that has like an elastic waistband, you know, maybe like basketball shorts or uh, sweatpants. That's fine, you know, if you can pull those up and down, that's good. I've seen people use uh, like a bungee cord to put on the front and pull them down so they can get to the entry point. Uh, it just really depends on what you're comfortable with. But if you're new to it, I would say, you know, find shorts or pants or something like that that have a zipper. That way you can kind of get them down a little bit easier uh, to be able to access and get the catheter in. Okay, now let's talk about this catheter. Uh, this is the Roche MMG H2O. Like I said, this is a hydrophilic catheter. I really like these. Uh, they're smooth. They go in a lot easier, at least for me, than the um, the traditional uh, closed system that has a lubricant in it. Uh, so let me just go ahead and open this. So the first thing is, you'll see up here it's got this little hole, uh, which is nice. It's easy to hold. And it, it also makes it a little bit easier to pull it apart. Um, you can do your fingers like this and pull it and hit it ripped. Uh, what I typically do is, I'll actually use my teeth um, to, to pull the balls apart. Yeah, and they're, they're not like the easiest. I mean, this is, as you can see, it wasn't like the best, but um, there's different ways of doing it. If your hands are a little bit moist, um, it's, uh, it's easier to pull it apart. Anyway, okay. So inside the bag is going to be a little bag where you can put all of your items. Uh, it comes with this little square, which is handy. Uh, these catheters, at least I've noticed that some of them leak a little bit. So I'll tend to put this right under where the entry point is and it'll, it'll catch some of the saline or, or urine that comes out. Um, it also has this little square, which is like an anti antiseptic wipe. I really like these. Um, it's part of the whole kind of being sterile. Uh, I use it. Uh, you know, you, you may see some people that, or talk to some people when they put the catheter in, they, they just take the sterile catheter, put it in and, and take it out and, and they're done. But I like to use this in addition to it's just you know it's more barrier to prevent uh, urinary tract infection that kind of thing uh, it comes with this little square which I think is handy I don't use it uh, for the catheterization part I do keep these uh, they come in handy for a lot of uses but I actually use this for my bowel program uh, to put the lubricant on it and I'll show you that in another video uh, but I do hold on to these because they come in handy Next thing would be a pair of gloves. I personally don't put on gloves, it's really hard to do. Uh, but I do keep these around, um, you know, if I need help with, uh, you know, like the bowel program, uh, the insertion of the suppository, I may have these around, like, you know, uh, my wife could help me with it. Or I, I'll just keep them in general, you know, they're, they're good for a lot of things. Um, yeah, otherwise, unless you have a big box of them, I mean, there's no need to keep these individual ones. But they're good for traveling, that kind of thing. All right, and here's the actual catheter itself. Now I want to first make a little comparison. I have um, an older lubricant catheter and I just want to show you. So this is an older Rouge and what it has is it just, it has the lubricant in the bag. This for me, um, you know, as a quad with limited hand dexterity, I had a tough time getting this out. I know there's a lot of little tricks that people have told me. I mean, you can actually get like little clips that you can clip on this and push it out and push it through. 
Um, but I have a tough time um, with these older lubricant ones, and that's why I really like the hydrophilic because it, it comes out a lot easier, and I'll show you. All right, so first thing that I'm going to do with this is you can see there's this little foil bag in the part in the bottom. This is the, the actual saline that's going to make this catheter slippery. Now, you have to pop it in order to get the saline out. I had a little bit of trouble at first, but what I ended up doing was I just folded over and it, I'll show you. I squeeze the top of it down and then just fold it over. So by folding it, it kind of creates pressure. And then I just use this part of my wrist. I squeeze together. You can hear that little noise that popped it. And then you have, I'll just hold it by the top here. It's got the lubricant. Oh, let me do it like this. It'll be easier to see. Kind of smooth it out to make sure it's out. So now I just kind of go like this and move the lubricant, or not lubricant, I move the saline around to get it wet. I'll put this to the side because what I like to do is get the rest of these things ready to go. So this bag is a little bit tricky. Um, you may decide you don't need this. If you're in a bathroom where you have a trash can nearby or something like that, you don't need it. Um, but I like it because I can put everything in it. Uh, the handy thing about the bag is if you're in a car or you're somewhere else, um, with the closed system, you know, you, it gives you the option to really catch yourself, you know, anywhere, which is a piece, you know, comfort, peace of mind, right? I mean, if you're out and about, you're going to a barbecue, you don't know the settings, you know, you're thinking, oh gosh, you know, I want to have a beer, I want to have something to drink, but I might have to, to go to the bathroom. But, you know, with this system, I know, okay, with my minivan, if I really needed to, I could go into my minivan, I could catch myself, put in this bag, it's clean, um, you know, it's all tucked away, and then you can discard it, you know, later, at a later time. So that's kind of nice. Um, so what I do, in order to open this, sometimes it's a little sticky, I'll just lick the sides of my palms, kind of rub this together like so, and it's going to pop open. Now... Just opens a little bit. What I'll do is I'll put my hand in here, put my hand on top, force it down. Then I'll put the one corner on my knee, slide it across. Then it opens it up. Now you got an open bag. Now with this bag, what I tend to do, let's just say I'm not using the gloves. I'll put those in the trash. And I'll also take the actual... Um, the catheter bag, put it in here as well. Now this bag, I'll typically, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'll lean it up just against the side of my chair down here at the bottom. So that way as I'm using stuff, I can just kind of put it into the bag while I'm done with it. Now, okay. At this point, I would have my pants down. Um, in order to get to the entry point, I'll wear like um, boxer briefs. I'll just take that, fold it back, tuck it behind the man parts, and it should give me access to what I need. If you need to scoot out of your chair a little bit, if you can, that's probably best to get, you know, better angle of entry. Uh, but that's how I would do it. I would typically have my pants all the way down, everything open before I'm opening everything up. That way you're not fumbling around, trying to hold it while you're doing your, your clothing. Okay, when I'm at that point, I'm gonna go to the antiseptic wipe. Again, it's closed, don't have the finger dexterity, what do I do? You could have a pair of scissors if you want to open this up. That's totally fine. Uh, if you have a favorite pair that's small and, could, and you can carry them with you. Uh, I usually just rip this. I'll bite it on the end and I'll kind of rip down at an angle. And in doing that, it'll open it in a way that it'll allow an edge of this so I can pull it out with my teeth. So first thing, I'll grab the side. Hold it. Rip down. Now, put that in my little bag. Now, it, it didn't open it up, you know, exactly the way I wanted, but if I just bend it out, I can get my teeth on it and pull it out. Now, this little towelette, I like to open it all the way up. I mean, you don't necessarily have to do that, but what I'm going to do is, you know, when I open this up, typically, um, I'll rub this all over the top of the area, and I will actually... You know, I'll rub it all over and I will leave this on top uh, while I'm getting anything else ready to go. So I'll, I'll leave this antiseptic on top of the entry point. I'll go back to my catheter here. You know, shake this up a little bit more, get the liquid, you know, in good shape. Now, 
One of the tricky parts that I know, like uh, talking to the quads, they have an issue with is getting this tube out. This kind of goes back to what I was saying with the other one. When you have the traditional lubricant, it can be very difficult to push this out, especially if the catheter is soft. Once you get it in, you might not be able to push it through down your urethra again because it's sticking with the lubricant. With this, it's not that. It's not that at all. So you can pull this off at the top. You might fling it up. What I do is I just, I just bite it. Now, if you feel with this lubricant that you can't get it in to your urethra, there is a little bit of lubricant in the tip here, and I always keep this just in case. Um, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you can't get the catheter in. Maybe you haven't catheterized in, in a long time, and it's dry, and it's just not going in. Um, this, this will help. Lubricant always helps kind of get you through the, the, the initial entry point. So just keep this until you figure that out. Now, again, no lubricant here. It slides out pretty easy. You know, I'm not... I have you know, some pretty stiff hands, so I'm, I'm doing this now, but let's just say it didn't pop out. You could put this on your knee and kind of push your knuckle down on it and kind of force it out. The other way you could do it, bite it, force it out. There's a couple different tricks to doing it, but I, I typically don't have trouble getting this type of catheter out. Now, once it's out, um, you know, you got to kind of find a way to hold it. Some people like to not pull it out, they like to put it in directly and then push it. I have a little bit of trouble doing that. So typically I will push the catheter out about, you know, four or five inches before I put it in. This kind of helps you guide it too. If you bunch it up, your hand can fit into it. I'll go ahead and I'll insert it. Get it in about those four or five inches. The nice thing is, is once it's in your urethra about four or five inches, it creates a little bit of a suction. So at that point, what you can do is kind of straighten out the bag and you can start to pull the bag a little bit and the catheter will come with it. Now you might say, oh, that's dangerous. You're pulling on, you know, the catheter inside. But really I'm talking very little um, movement to pull this bag because again, with the, um, with the um, saline, it's not sticking in the bag like it would with the lubricant. So it's gonna come right out. So once you have that in, one of the other things is, you know, when you get to the entry point, uh, when you get to the part where you're, you're getting past your sphincter muscle and the urine's going to come out, um, the next question would be, okay, how do you hold it? Um, for me, so this little hole is what comes in handy. So once I have this down, I got the catheter in, typically if the urine starts flowing, I'll just push both hands and hold it in place. Once I have one hand down, I can kind of move this hand over, get my finger into this loop, and then I can just release this hand and hold it. Now you can see the urine coming out. You can feel, you know, you can see when it's done. Um, when you get to that point, uh, that's when you can pull it out. But I typically use this. This is what's going to hold this catheter in place, especially if you have a, a good amount of urine. Um, you know, if you have a lot of volume that's coming out, it's going to get heavy. It's going to start to want to fall. Um, so that's where you want to be able to secure it. You know, this is a very different technique than a straight catheter. You know, a straight catheter, the urine's going directly in the toilet or some type of receptacle. Uh, you're not going to get that pressure on the catheter like you would when it's filling up in a bag. Um, so you got to figure out a good way to hold it, but this is how I would do it, this hole. Okay, so once it's full, you're going to slowly pull it out. Make sure that you pull it out slowly because there is some suction that's pulling the urine out. But once you let go, if you have, uh, let's just say, you got this tube out pretty far, and you pull it out and it's got urine in it and it's down, that urine's just going to come down and leak all over your pants. So make sure that you're using gravity and you go down low. Once you pull it out to where it gets some, get that rid of that suction, the urine's just gonna go, the residual's just gonna go right back down into the bag. Okay, once you've got that full, um, there is a little tear piece here. I don't even mess with that. I just go down to about, you know, three quarters away. Bite, rip, got a nice little hole. Now, this may be hard for you to hold. Um, for me, I, you know, I have decent tenodesis with these pinchers. I'll just kind of grab it on the side here and um, can do it like this. If you want, again, thumb in here. You can lay it on your leg, get really close to the toilet, bend it like this. A couple ways to do it. Just kind of, um, you know, try it out and do what's comfortable for you. But that's the main idea. And then when I'm done with this, I'm just going to go ahead and discard that in the bag um, that I have down here. Now, uh, and I didn't have to use this, but again, it's got lubricant in it. If you want to, you know, put that in the entry point, you can do that as well. 
Well, that's pretty much it on how you would use uh, this particular system. Uh, one of the things that I, I do want to mention, so there's different ways of, of kind of introducing yourself to catheterization. Uh, you know, I had to switch from the condom catheter because I was keeping too much residual in my bladder. So I think um, at any given point in time, I was keeping between three and 400 cc's in my bladder, even after kicking off and voiding in the condom cat, which was too much, um, you know, and it was uncomfortable. So what they recommended at first was, okay, catheterize a couple times a day, but still use the condom cat. So that was fine. Uh, I got used to doing it. I felt better. Uh, but after a while, I really liked the idea of not having to have to wear anything or have anything on my leg, uh, that kind of thing. So I started to cath more and more, and I got to a point where I, I talked to the doctor. I said, I don't want to wear the condom cath anymore. What, you know, what do I do? Is there anything I need to take? Uh, so he met, recommended a uh, medicine called Ditropan, which is very old. I know there's a lot of new medications now, uh, but the idea with Ditropan is it's an anticholinergic. And what that means is it um, essentially stops the spasms in your urinary tract. Uh, it helps smooth that out. So if you don't have those spasms, you don't have the urge to go to the bathroom. And therefore, I don't think you're kicking off any urine. Like your sphincter muscles not opening and closing and releasing urine. So by taking that, um, you know, you're able to actually build up volumes in your bladder. And you're not going to, you know, urinate on yourself. It's a, it's a way that you can, you know, wear underwear and pants or shorts and no leg bag. It's a very liberating feeling. I mean, I felt really good when I got to a point where I could do that. Uh, the only thing I want to mention about that though is to keep in mind is you know you have to be responsible when you're when you start taking something like a ditch or pen uh, and that's because of the bladder pressures. So if you're not going to be kicking off uh, when your body says okay your bladder's got too much urine um, you need to be good about calving every few hours uh, depending on you know your how much liquids how many uh, you know how much liquid you're putting in your body. Um, so that's the thing. You just have to be careful. You know, I've been in situations where you, you know you go out and you, you go and you have a beer or two, and maybe you're not in your bathroom and you're having a good conversation, and then you just oh you feel like your bladder's full, and because you know alcohol or even coffee is like a diuretic, I mean you your bladder fills up really quickly. So you just have to be careful about those things. You know, you, your habits are going to change. You know, you don't want to drink a lot before you go to bed. Um, you know, if like I have a little bit of swelling in my legs. I know that when I lay flat and take a nap or go to bed that my bladder will get full, so I, I need to make sure I don't drink a whole lot near the you know, latter part of the day. Um, so you just have to think about those things when you do that. But it's a nice freedom if you can take that medicine, catheterize on a regular basis. Um, you know, it allows for um, you know, some good independence that you may, uh, you may find that you like. All right, well, that's it. Uh, thank you for joining me today. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. You can send me an email at abilities at gmail.com. Uh, we are on Instagram and Twitter, so you know, go ahead and follow us. Leave messages there, post pictures. Um, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the Abilities channel. We'll be putting out more videos. Uh, and I thank you again for watching today and taking the time to let me show you how I use my closed system for uh, catheterization. Take care. Keep working hard on your independence. Thanks, guys.